It's a time for Package from China, but I think it's going to be a very interesting one, so let's go! <laughs> hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the new Retroid Pocket number 3. I just released the review of the 2 Plus because it was a little bit late to the party, but I just wanted to take a close look at this version. Like, what is it? How is it? And is it worth our money? Ready know, like, this thing comes with the same specifications like the number 2. So let's take a close look in the books and let's do some testing. And what are we going to get? So inside the box, basically we're going to get some extra spare parts. And the reason why I understand this situation, that the original buttons in the machine, they were not really satisfied with it, and they give you like a such a kind of an upgrade. You don't need to implement it if you don't want to, but that's maybe something we can do in a separate video. You can see over here we do get like new buttons, some membranes, everything that we're going to need for upgrading. Mine came with a 32 gigabyte card. So let's take a close look in here with the Retroid Pocket. So the first thing I really like about what they're doing over there is like the way they just present the product. It looks very nice it comes from a very sleek nice box and i must say that when you're looking at all of stuff i've reviewed in the last couple of years retro pocket is one of those many companies that yeah deliver nice quality products in a very cool way the box cannot be opened so we need to peel off the seal the seal of approval the seal of retro pocket yeah there we go all right let's put it on the box over here let's go Okay, so the box is made of very thick cardboard and with a magnetic slug, pretty damn cool. And the way they present this, again, like, I really like it, I dig this. So, for collectible reasons, if you like boxes, you're going to be happy with it. So, let's take a close look in here, we're going to get the handout shelf, I'm going to say it's got a very nice way to it. Here we do get a shelf, like the toilet paper manual, like always, only this is the deluxe edition with the glossy paper. And so, it does give you some explanation, some basic explanation, how things work. Did it even like we did even like put something over it that's kind of funny and now we do have like the cable and here we see like it's a purple version and to be honest no idea why it's purple and yeah seriously like purple i know blue is three to though but okay the purple is something new so because i pre-ordered it i got myself a free screen protector that we're not going to use the color version that i'm getting is the more like super nes version the american way but when you're looking at the colors over here you do see there are a lot of different versions okay i can say like i got myself the retroid 2 plus edition in black i absolutely like hate it so you would have like the special version the 16 bit they also call it would have the retro snow indiegogo or the gamecube version white and the orange so when it comes to the colors absolutely amazing take consideration you do have like two versions but it says over here, they have got the, the 3 gigabyte and the 32 gigabyte of storage capacity. But you also have like one with 2 gigabyte. To be honest, kind of confusing why they basically give you this option. Uh, maybe for it, they just want to give you like a cheaper option. But let's do a quick overview of the handheld itself. Personally, I really love the design of the Red Hot Pocket 3. And, and I mean like the way just how it looks and how it feels. At the left side we're going to get ourselves the Clickies D-pad and I must say like I personally really like them and most of the time they're very responsive and over here we're going to get ourselves the more like Switch clone look like joystick with a click underneath. The handout itself comes with a volume control and physical button the consideration that is not a common thing with every single handheld. Alright, so at the back we're going to get ourselves a quite interesting, let's say, configuration. So we do have like the select and start button over here at the top. That is the first thing that I've ever seen it. We do have like the micro switches when it comes to the shoulder buttons, L1 and R1. And with the L2 and the R2 we're going to get ourselves like more like the trigger buttons. But also both have, I think, micro switches. And here we do have like the on and off switch. And at the bottom part, we're going to get ourselves the Type-C for basically charging, data transfer, the jack for the audio headphone, and then we do have the option for an SD card or a TF card. They also love to call it. And here we do have like the home button at the right side. And at the front, of course, we do get the ABXY and the same joystick. So I really like the giving you the option for two joysticks with this device. And in my opinion, this is the best button configuration. And I mean like having like Two joysticks over here at the bottom part and the d-pad at the left top corner. So personally when it comes to the layout I'm very pleased with it. The only thing is it's very like slim over here and yeah I must say like I'm not the biggest fan of it. I tried some different handhelds that have like some yeah, some different just way of, of feeling like playing for a very long comfortable time because they were not all like slimmed down. They're just having some more comfortable like say shell design. 
and of course we have like two speakers over here so let's take a close look at that i'm curious how they will sound Okay guys, so when you're looking at the specification list, it's quite disappointing. A lot of people, I did read comments, people were disappointed simply because this is just a new handheld. It is number three. But basically you're going to get the same specs only in different casing. And that's the point that I'm thinking it's pretty damn cool if you're going to grab this thing for your first handheld. It can play a lot of cool things if you like tinkering. But in the end, yeah, this is what we're going to get with the specs. All right, so let's power on the device itself and what you need to do basically. And that is something you need to take consideration when checking out the Retroid Pocket 3. That is something you need to configure yourself. So I think this thing has a lot to offer, including touchscreen, Android, all kinds of cool things. But when you're looking at this, the loading times of the freaking device are quite long, to be honest. When I'm trying to speak, you can see like, oh man, it loads up normally like most handhelds are already booted up. But beside the point, once anyway, you're looking at this, yeah, you need to have like some knowledge setting everything up. And of course, they need to rip something off. Yep. Let me know in the comments if you know where this sound was for or where it was from. I know which game it exactly basically was. All right, so booting up the first time, this is what we need to do. Okay, so what you need to do basically is set it up. We've seen it before. There are tutorials out there with, for example, Retro Game Core. So we have like how you need to set up. Not only this is basic stuff like your language, you need to connect to the internet. I don't going to do that. Yep, going to skip and do that later, but you need to set it up. Okay, time zone. And of course the Google Play service, if you want to enable it or not enable it. I want to enable it. I want to add myself the Play Store and add new games and emulators through my account. And yeah, here I like, that is something I really like. You have some option to install some pre-install apps. So that's pretty damn cool to give you the option to make that installing everything way easier. So if you don't know which one you want to check out, you can just basically install every single one of them. But here you can see like we have the Flycast for Dreamcast, uh, the Pupin, the M64 for Mupin, the M64 Plus. So we have all kinds of different ones. If you want to start streaming with Moonlight, it's all possible. PPSSPP for PlayStation Portable. Personally, I really like Red Dreams. That's something I'm going to choose. Retro R for all the old stuff. And here we have even Steam Link. So we can configure this and use it like and device for steam so ether ethics still can already tell you it's not going to run great in my opinion because this thing is absolutely on the power for playstation 2 maybe with some updates and tinkering you can get some games to work but it's not like the ultimate PlayStation 2 emulator all right so now it's going to be setting it all up it will take some time depending on how much you're choosing of the apps after everything has been set up, you have the option to choose the Retro Pocket 3 launcher. This looks a little bit like a Nintendo Switch. Or you can just use the AOSP launcher, or nevertheless like your just typical Android. So with the RP3 launcher, what is very convenient, if you're going to add the games through your let's say, SD card, you can configure everything. Now it's completed the tutorial. It will load up into the Retro Pocket launcher. And here we need to set up everything. Add your application, add your games. Config everything, there are tutorials out there, and when you have done this, you're ready to go. But I can tell you, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Alright, so let's do a quick example how you need to set everything up. So the first thing that we need to do is pressing quit over here. So with quit, we're going back to the Android part. Take consideration that depending on what kind of emulator you want to use, you need to basically set everything up. For example, if you want to use Dolphin, you need to open Dolphin. You don't really particularly need to add your games. But basically when you're booting up this device or this piece of software in combination with like i mentioned before setting up is not quite a pain in the ass but the reason why because yeah you need to have some knowledge when it comes to emulators but that is like let's say like retro pocket launcher made it quite easier to begin with you're going to add yourself a system and with the system you can choose what kind of system you want to add to your collection and here you can see like we have Sega Game Gear, we have all the systems that we're going to need. So let's say for example you want to use Wonderswam, you're going to check the box, press OK, and it will add it to the row of all the systems that you want to play. But how do you configure? It's quite interesting, because when you want to implement your games like this, it looks very cool and it's easy to boot up. But it's not super easy, no not at all. So the first thing you need to do is basically quit the launcher. The next thing you need to do, for example with the retro games, we want to load up Retro Arc. So with RetroArch, we need to boot it up over here. So if you want to get this, what you need to do is load your online core in. And with the core, you can basically like set up of your games. So let's say 
you want to have a system like Sega Saturn, Atari, depends of course what kind of platform you want to add to it. When you have chosen the decor itself, you need to go to the page over here. You can see all kinds of games have been added to the system. So basically what you're going to do here is going to the plus with scan the directory. With scanning the directory, we're going to the storage. In my case, it's going to be this weird number, that is my SD card. We're going to add ourselves the ROM files to the retro arc. And with retro arc, we can basically like add ourselves the connection to the front loader. So basically that's what you're going to do. And with Dolphin, you need to open up the Dolphin emulator and piece to the Ether SX2. So I hope you understand this. It's basically just what you're going to do. You need to set everything up to the back end and we have done this. There's a, like tutorials out there with RetroArc, but I just wanted to show you very briefly how this works. So now we have set up the emulator or RetroArc, depending on what you're going to need. We go into the Retroid launcher. It's been booted up again. So the next thing we need to do is set the games or a certain folder. So let's say I want to set a PlayStation. There are no games, what you can see over here. Go into the left bottom over here, try to check the ROMs. Here we go to add the files, depending where you've basically stored your files, internal storage or SD, in my case SD. Here we go to scroll through the list. I always recommend giving everything a very good name so you always find your files. Next thing what you do is check the box. So here we have the box on the PSX. Select, scan. Now it's scanning all of the files. If the naming is right, you're also getting a folder or a picture. Next thing we need to do is open up the game. Here you can see like it does boot up instantly, but it does show me like I have problems with the emulator and the BIOS. So we need to set up the do, but basically this is how it works. If you do have some issues with this, so what we need to do is basically going back to the main menu. So for example, if I want to edit the path where it's basically like loading up the emulator, it has been set to the dock station. I don't want this. We go back to over here, this tiny arrow, we depress it. Here we can choose all kinds of presets. So in my case, I am going to choose, let's see, we're going to choose the RetroArch PSX of SX rearmed. All right, so we're pressing the save. So basically the program knows what kind of emulator you need to boot up. All right, so let's cancel it up because I already saved it. When we press the game again, it will boot up into RetroArch, which you can see over here. I have set this basically the quick load, quick save, or better said, all the other fear just to insert in button mapping, pressing the shoulders, basically resets going back to mine. And that's basically how you need to set it up at every single freaking time with an emulator or a retro arc. All right, guys, so I am not really done with setting everything up, but it'll give you like a great example. So with the front loader of Retroid, I must say that it looks pretty damn cool and the experience is pretty damn cool. And again, like it takes a lot of time to set everything up and especially when you're looking into the PlayStation Portable. Like, not that we have like multiple files, we can remove those, not a big of a deal, but I wanted to show you like, there are some things you take consideration. So let's say if you want to play some Super NES, and let's say you're going to play and boot up a game. Take consideration if your picture doesn't show up, this means you need to rename the, pro the, the game itself. So that's something you need to do. Like here you can see like, I basically choose for like having the buttons in the display, but when pressing it, they will rem basically remove from the screen itself. Also for the shortcut, if I'm pressing both L1 and R1 at the same time, it basically closes retro arc and pressing both of the joystick will give me like the option to get into retro arc. But when it comes to PlayStation Portable, there we do have like some different things. So when pressing over here on the wipeout hero, it will boot up a wipeout instantly. The only downside is the shortcut doesn't work due of like not using retro arc. So we did the slide to over here and we're going to make the quick load, quick save. It's not a big of a deal. Exit menu, exit. And we basically have the same thing going on. So when I'm looking at the interface, there are some minor things I need to take consideration. But besides that, when everything has been set up, yeah, it was a pain in the ass. Took me a very, very long time. But depending, of course, how much you want to add. But I think it's pretty damn cool. And I really like the interface. It gives like a completely different experience when it comes to this handheld. And it gives them some extra kudos for this. But let's test some games. All right, so let's try the first game. And I must say, like, when you configure everything, it works very well. I really love the D-pad of the Red Red Pocket 3. It's a little bit tiny compared with different D-pads of other, the Android Nick handheld of Pau Kitty. And I messed up. All right, so but you can see like, of course the old stuff runs, it runs just well on this. So personally, I really hate about this thing that the start button is over here. It's such an inconvenient thing. I'm so used to it basically like at the front. Really kind of weird if they have to put the 
choice to build another top. It's kind of weird in my opinion. But another thing is a little bit of a bummer. At the side we do have the volume control when holding it. Sometimes I do press it accidentally. So there's also a little bit of a downside to this. Another thing I really love about it is like the display of this device is absolutely amazing. For the price you're paying for this. Also the press. I too, maybe in the future I will change out the buttons just to see what, but why there are like extra buttons with this. Because I think the original buttons that came with this device play very nicely. But also of course 16 bit stuff runs pretty damn cool. So let's reset it and let's go back and let's try some other games. I think when you're looking at the Retroid, it's absolutely amazing device for playing some retro games. But the downside to this is why we're having so many of these bloody things that can play actually the same games. Okay, so let's see if we're going to mess it up. This is jump. Alright, and this is oh wait, this is jump. I'm always doing the freaking super move somehow. And I managed not to do it this time. Also, PlayStation 1 will run just fine on this. Depending on what kind of emulator, depending also like what kind of performance you're going to get. Duck Station is one of my favorite ones to use. And loading. Yeah. Okay. Wow, right up in the face. Beast mode. A lot of fun games, a really fun game to play. And of course the benchmark for PlayStation 1. Alright, time for the beefcake and dinos. Of course you need to choose the beefcake dude. But also no problem with MAME. If you want if you want to play some killer thing, that is not going to be a thing. But just for your typical, let's say, beat em ups, there's no problem whatsoever. And they look just amazing on this device. Beefcake man is here, is going to mess you up. Beefcake man is here, is going to punch you to the door. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, come on. <laughs> Walk it to my fist. Yeah, indeed, that's good. <laughs> Pure satisfaction. Oh, yeah, got it the shotgun. Hasta la vista, baby. All right, so next up some Sega Dreamcast and I must say like absolutely amazing performance on this and I think it's pretty interesting time basically with handhelds we have like so many cool devices that are quite affordable in my opinion and can play Sega Dreamcast. It runs now on the Redream, there are a lot of different emulators to choose from so this is basically not running through RetroArch, it has like a separate emulator that I've shown you before that we need to set up. And I must say, like, the audio on this bloody freaking thing is amazing. The resolution is normal, 640 by 480. You can even upscale it if you want to a little bit, but I think it's really damn looking good, so this way. I really love to play it. I think it's... Sonic Adventure 2 is such a fun game. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the Sonic games when it comes to three-dimensional, but this one particular one I really like. Alright, so if you want to go exit, normally with other emulators you need to slide, but this time what we need to do is basically touch the three dots over there. You can make a quick load, quick save, and we can basically try, try, press the exit and go all the way back. So let's try some different games, but you can see like a lot of stuff runs pretty damn good. Alright, so let's try some Diddy Kong farting! One of my favorite games to play. Ah, oh, messed up my turbo. So what I did notice with N64, it's going to be mixed performance depending what game game you're going to play, what emulator. So you need to mess around with it a little bit to get all of the games work properly. Tidicon Racing is a launch title, it's not going to be a big of a deal. The well, way you can see it over here, a lot of games are playable. Some even can be upskilled if you get the right emulator.
It plays amazing with the joystick. It looked great, sounds great. A very positive experience, I can tell you that. I can't stop playing here. Going great. Oh yeah. Let's finish the race. Let's finish the race. No, not right to my old oh, stop. Oh yeah. Alright, so next up let's play some Game Boy Advance. Also a great system to play on this. Already messed up with the first jump. Great wicket! Doing great! Cap! I messed it up! Alright, so let's play some PlayStation Portable. And I must say that I personally not a big fan of this, simply because the system is just underpowered, or that is my opinion. I was talking the last day with Pandori team, and he was claiming that he had got a lot of games to work. You need to like mess around a lot with the settings. For example, the backend needs to be Vulkan or OpenGL for some of the games, so that is just like a gamble. But I have reached the point now with these handhelds, if you just drop a game in it, you're putting one just a basic low resolution and it doesn't run well. Yeah, you don't really want to tinker. I think it's not worth picking up a device like this. But again, what you can see over here, when a lot of stuff happens on the screen, it gives a little bit of a stutter, but Wipeout seems to be running just fine. But if you want to get into the emulation part and PSP, for example, the AGN Odin is one of those handhelds that can even run God of War up to like three times resolution. It looks amazing, absolutely. But yeah, you're going to pay three times the money than Retroid Pocket 3. And you should like wonder yourself how much money you want to spend and what kind of game you want to play on a handout like this. But how does it work with the HDMI functionality? Oh, mine didn't came with in the cable, so I grabbed one from my storage. So when plug it again, it works plug and play with me. You can see over here, it automatically switches to the television and now we can play your games basically on the TV. I think it's a pretty damn cool extra feature, something they need to add more to the handhelds. But for the money, so basically what you're going to get, I think it's pretty damn awesome. Let's crank up the volume. Let's press a freaking annoying start button at the top. And as you can see, we can play and have a lot of fun. It will run to RetroArch, so I can reset it. Go back to the Retro R or Retroid Pocket Launcher and choose my different game and basically go all, go all my way. So let's choose a different game. I touch it to remove my freaking touch buttons. And we can just play like that. Oh yeah, beefcake and some wolfies. Mm -mm. An awesome future, and with my version, it seems to be working really good and very well. But let's talk about the pros and cons. So when you're looking at this device, like it's the number three, but basically what you're going to get is the same stuff that we've seen many times before, only now in a different casing. But I really like the casing. It's a bit of display. It's just like a bitter, like comfortable handheld. If you just want to use the Android functionalities, I think this is a way better handheld than the number two plus. Yeah, the pros and cons, you can see them over here. The cons, I think the biggest thing is like place two and GameCube. It's going to be a mixed performance or not at all. I think that is something, if it stutters like crazy, it's not playable in my opinion. So for that, you don't need to get this handheld. It's just for the low end stuff. Yeah, setting it up, it's going to be a little bit of pain in the ass, especially if you don't have any knowledge about it. There are some great tutorials out there. Retro Game Corps made one amazing one for the two plus, especially the same software like this one. So you have like a good guide for that. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell. It will be great to see you in the next video.